Kia ora whanau. well it is the day before opening, opening morning, getting ready, cars packed and um, we're about to get on the road, shooting down to the Waikato. The weather's meant to be like this um, tomorrow as well for opening morning, so yeah, not uh, not the best duck shooting weather, but uh, definitely warm. So yeah, we're looking forward to it, we'll see how we go, hopefully we can grab a few birds and um, yeah, enjoy our time down there. Fresh start in the Waikato. Just off to feed the dogs. It's free, we'll jump on into it. Pretty fresh. Watch next. We used to have. Just seen a few paradise ducks land in a paddock not far away, so I'm going to um, go and see if we can scare them off and then wait for them to come back. So I've just put out some silhouette decoys and about oh, seven or eight mallards. And um, I'll just sit here for a while, see if we can bring something in. Conditions are not perfect for moving the birds around, but you never know, anything can happen. Farmers can go and shift their stock or disrupt a few birds on the, on the open paddocks or on the ponds. People might still be shooting at this time. It's about it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so generally the bird activity is pretty quiet during the afternoons. But um, I found this my Huntek layer on the top there is pretty much a perfect combination for bush or grass, these sorts of areas, it's perfect. So this is the view, um, as you can see up the front there I've got about five or six mallard decoys and then some paradise silhouette decoys which I've made and just propped them up there so the key things with the parries is to try and get them up on some nice high points so that they can be visibly seen by any ducks in the area and then those mallard decoys well if we get a couple of mallards flying around I may be able to entice some of them in as well the federal speed shop so this is a one and one quarter ounce load three inch shooting threes so twos or threes are probably the preferred load that I like to run for the ducks and I'm running that through a modified choke uh, I sometimes find that that cylinder choke is, is too open especially if the birds start to get out a little bit further it's fine if it's decoying and nice and close but as soon as you start getting over 30 yards, the holes in the pattern can get a bit bigger, so that's why I run the threes instead of the twos normally, try and keep the pattern 
a little bit denser and run that modified choke just to keep that density of that pattern down a little bit. Righto, well I'm up nice and early, this is Sunday morning so I'm getting a process on, sorting out a few of these birds before we get underway for day two. Um, it's always nice just to space the amount of effort over the, uh, over the weekend rather than having to pluck or you know, process everything at the same time. So. So we're just opening up the paradise duck breast here, as you can see. And we're going to cut that section of meat out. You can see there's a bit of pellet damage here and here. So we might take those bits out, but see how we get on. <clears throat> you can also, with the, with the paradise ducks, you can also take a bit of that leg meat. Quite a bit of meat there on the legs. Beauty. So you got your bit of meat. Front and back. So this is the drop point knife that we've done a collab with Victory Knives on. So as you can see, it's nice and short. Um, it's perfect for this little work, breasting out birds. Um, we also have this on my hunting belt, so I use it for, of course, deer and um, cutting up pigs in the field. Nice shape, beautiful, very sharp, keeps its edge well. Victory Knives, of course. Quality made, good steel. I find when you're doing the breasting work, if you can grab hold of the skin and roll your knuckles downwards, that really helps to bring that breast meat or that breast plate out. So you get a nice wrap around it. Right, oh, well, we're just um, working our way through a couple of geese. So I'm going to pluck these, do a full pluck on them, and um, yeah, do a full roast with them, so make the most out of the, the birds. They're still a little bit warm, so that's the best time to get your pluck on. Something to think about when you're plucking your birds is if you've got any mates that do any fly time, tie their own fishing flies, ask if they would like any of the feathers and then just make that gather and go a little bit further. Okay, so I'm just getting set up to process the duck breasts. So these are the vacuum sealed bags that I use. Always, of course, name them. And um, this is the vacuum sealer that I use. Really good one. Works very well. Innovation. And these are just some of the paradise duck breasts which I've um, cut obviously out of the, the birds on the weekend. There's a couple here which have got a little bit of um, blood marking. I might just touch those up a little bit but the idea is that I put them on a towel and then I can bring this towel over the top here and just give them a bit of a press. Good old push down, try and take out some of that moisture. Of course, if you can hang your birds, um, 
it will help them to dry out and you want them to sort of be drier rather than moist. So, okay. right. pull that off. That just takes a little bit more of that moisture off the bird. And the less moisture that you can have going into the, the vacuum sealed bags, the better. So, just a wee tip that works for me. Okay, well, getting set up for the drift shoot, and a few of the things that I take, um, just a, something to get a bit of um, foliage off any of the sort of nearby bushes. Cut that off. Um, cable ties. Use some cable ties to either fix the camo net to the kayak or to, to put on some foliage from the area. Just cable tie that on, easy as. Um, cap, of course. Just your stuff for sorting out the kayaks, put them on the roof. Um, of course, we need some ammunition, so that is our belt. Um, spare ammo. Maybe we'll need it, maybe we might, I don't know. Um, two boxes of spare. This here is a creation I kind of made up using some number 8 wire. This is a, a fitting for a starport mount on the kayak. So it's essentially going to sit up there like that. And then I'm going to rest the fore end of the gun in there so it's everything's pointing forwards. Um, gloves if it's a cold morning. Beanie there. Um, rope is for attaching the gun or the paddle to the kayak so we don't lose anything this is an easy one to forget toilet paper earplugs um, yeah knife this is for the GoPro mount to get it nice and tight face paint snap bar and I think there's some thinner in there as well there's a bit of Makona half mutton. This is the gun mount that I use. So that's a GoPro gun mount. Clip that onto the barrel there. And then underneath that, I'll attach the GoPro itself. So we'll see what action we can get on there. Um, so that's all of those bits and pieces. Um, I put it all into a bucket. As you can see, um, that just keeps it entirely waterproof. Lid goes on the top, and uh, if it rains, then no worries, we've got everything covered. Uh, this is my power bank, so if I need to charge the GoPro or the phone along the way, that can get charged as well. Um, I have a spare set of clothes in here yeah what else um, I'm gonna drift in these so these are just some sneakers easy to get on and off um, you of course don't want to wear boots gum boots especially or waders or anything like that when you're in the kayak if you do fall out your boots will fill up with water so these are easy to get on and off, and if I need to get them off in a hurry, I can. Uh, this is the gear that I'm going to be wearing in the morning. So some nice warm socks. Uh, I've got the lead lenser there. Uh, this is the merino top. And then there's my camo, camo shirt to go over the top of it. I'll also be putting this on the top. This is my top layer. Uh, it's a waterproof jacket. Also wear a wetsuit keeps me warm and there's some camo net there um, for putting over the kayak giving it a bit of coverage life jacket dad's coming with me so I've got one there for him as well there is my seat I've kind of um, repurposed that foam mat and giving myself a little bit more comfort on the ride down the river this is all locked and loaded and we're ready to roll we're getting ready for the uh the 
avoid the eyeballs at all times. Pretty good. I find the face paint is a lot better than having to wear a face mask because those masks, yeah, they're not fun, eh? The old uh, COVID-19 reminds you to uh, really get into those joints, eh? Really just work, work that skin. Beautiful. Awesome. Job done with the facial. Um, Going to grab our gear and just dress up the kayaks a little bit. And um, I think the forecast is um, meant to be pretty good today. There's no rain scheduled until later on, so we should be in the clear. Um, the river's very low though, so we might be paddling a bit. And um, yeah, we're not, not going to get wet from above, so that's one bonus. But um, yeah, we've had a few ducks flying around so far, so. We might find something. Dad's pretty excited. Yeah. Looks like a nice day. Yeah. No, as Michael says, no wind at the moment. Uh, and out we'll head off and just see what it looks like. See what we can find. Okay, well we've just spotted about four or five mallards around this corner here. So Dad's just trying to tuck in close to that bank. See how we get on, but the mallards have seen us, so they're pushing a little bit further downstream. So we're going to try and sneak up on them and uh, try and figure out where they are. There's no wind at all, um, or rain, so it's pretty quiet. I think so. I wonder if they just rest here overnight. Yeah, a lot of paddling. Lots of paddling. The water level was quite low, but um, yeah, we managed to get some birds, which is nice. I think four paradise, two mallards, and, and a couple of geese. So it was Dad's first kayak trip, so it was good to do it together. And um, had a few laughs and a few challenges along the way with uh, flat bike tyres and various other things. But we, we got the job done and yeah, had a, had a good day out. Today, yes, it's quite an experience. I've never paddled for nine and a half hours ever before. <laughs> yep. Yep. The uh, river was so low and it was very hard to get close to the mallards because they could see us way before we could see them. Yeah, they were pretty cunning. We obviously had all the camouflage on the, on the kayaks yesterday. We didn't quite float down like this. It was a bit more dressed up, but um, yeah, the mallards were a bit cunning for us. Pretty, pretty difficult work to get onto them, but still got a nice representative bag for the area and um, got, some, got some pie for the for the roast in the winter ahead. The winter, the weather favoured the ducks, but it was a lovely day to be out there doing it. 
Hey Fano, today we are going to um, heat this goose up. Yep, so we're just going to take the feathers off. So we've done a main pluck on the goose. And took off the wings. Taken the wings off as well. Um, they just get quite finicky around the wings there. So done a full pluck on it pretty much. And we're just going to use this gas now to heat it up. Get rid of the extra fluff on there. So pretty straightforward. Make sure you Keep don't your hands, burn yourself, Dad. Keep your hands well clear, of course. And by the way, this guy's got Chase and Gather t-shirt on. Got and Chase and Gather there. He's the leader of Chase and Gather. So everybody know that. that? Hola! That's where a lot of the oil is uh, kept. In the tail there. Nope. Thank you.